Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley CIO and Chief U.S. Equity Strategist. Along with my colleagues bringing you a variety of perspectives, today I'll be talking about the Fed's 50 basis point rate cut last week and the impact on markets. It's Tuesday, September 24th at 1130 a.m. in New York. So let's get after it. As discussed last week, I thought that the best short-term case for equities was that the Fed could deliver a 50 basis point cut without prompting growth concerns. Chair Powell was able to thread the needle in this respect, and equities ultimately responded favorably. However, I also believe the labor data will be the most important factor in terms of how equities trade over the next three to six months. On that score, the next round of data will be forthcoming at the end of next week. In my view, that data will need to surprise on the upside to keep equity valuations at their currently elevated level. More specifically, the unemployment rate will need to decline and the payrolls above 140000 with no negative revisions to prior months. Meanwhile, I'm also watching several other variables closely to determine the trajectory of growth. Earnings revision breadth, the best proxy for company guidance, continues to trend sideways for the overall S&P 500 and negatively for the Russell 2000 small cap index. Due to seasonal patterns, this variable is likely to face negative headwinds over the next month. Second, the ISM Purchasing Managers Index has yet to reaccelerate after almost two years of languishing. And finally, the Conference Board Leading Economic Indicator and Employment Trends remain in downward trends. This is typical of a later cycle environment. Bottom line, the Fed's larger-than-expected rate cut can buy more time for high-quality stocks to remain expensive and even help lower-quality cyclical stocks to find some support. The labor and other data now need to improve in order to justify these conditions, though, through year-end. It's also important to point out that the August budget deficit came in nearly $90 billion above forecasts, bringing the year-to-date deficit above $1.8 trillion. We think this fiscal policy has been positive for growth, but has resulted in a crowding out within the private economy and financial markets. This is another reason why a recession is the worst-case scenario, even though some argue a recession is better than high price levels or inflation for 80 to 90 percent of Americans. A recession would undoubtedly bring debt deflation concerns to light, and once those begin, they're hard to reverse. The Fed understands this dynamic better than anyone, as first illustrated in Ben Bernanke's famous speech in 2002 entitled Deflation, Making Sure It Doesn't Happen Here. In that speech, he highlighted the tools the Fed could use to avoid deflation, including coordinated monetary and fiscal policy. We note that gold continues to outperform most stocks, including the high-quality S&P 500. Specifically, gold has rallied from just $300 at the time of Bernanke's speech in 2002 to $2,600 today. The purchasing power of U.S. dollars has fallen much more than what conventional measures of inflation would suggest. As a result, gold, High-quality real estate stocks and other inflation hedges have done very well. In fact, the newest fiat currency hedge, crypto, has done the best over the past decade. Meanwhile, lower-quality cyclical assets like commodities, small-cap stocks, and commercial real estate have done poorly in both absolute and relative terms and are losing serious value when adjusted for purchasing power. The bottom line, we expect this to continue in the short term until something happens to change investors' view about the sustainability of these policies. In order to reverse these trends, either organic growth in the private economy needs to reaccelerate and we'll see a rotation back to the low-quality cyclical assets, or a recession arrives and we finish the cycle and reset all asset prices to levels from which a true broadening out can occur. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, leave us a review wherever you listen and share thoughts on the market with a friend or colleague today. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you.